Part four in the run chart video series is about the family of measures. So when to use a run chart? A run chart is used to plot the data for the family of measures. So what are the family of measures? They are outcome measures, process measures, and balancing measures. So in order to measure the overall progress of your quality improvement project, these three major types of measures need to be considered. So why do we need the family of measures? Because healthcare systems are incredibly complex, any single measure as a sole means of determining improvement in a particular process or system is inadequate. What we need is multiple measures. They are necessary to better evaluate the impact of changes on the many facets of the system or the process. Improvement projects typically require a family of measures of say five to eight key global measures. And these measures are plotted using either a run chart or a statistical process control chart. So what is an outcome measure? An outcome measure is based on your quality improvement project's aim statement or the overall outcome that you're trying to achieve. An outcome measure is, is often the voice of the patient or the consumer, or it might be the stakeholders, staff or the community. It's the overall measure on how the process or the system is performing, in other words, the end result. An example here about patient falls prevention, the outcome measures for this kind of project might be the number of patient falls per month, or the fall rate per thousand occupied bed days, or the number of days between patient falls. And here's an example of a run chart looking at fall rate per thousand occupied bed days over time. So process measures, what are they? So they're a measure of the parts or steps in a process or a system to determine how they're performing. In a quality improvement project, you'll make some changes as you want to make some improvement and the process measures will focus on those changes to see if they're actually working. They can be measures of best practice or they may focus on the primary and secondary drivers in your driver diagram. And you'll find that process measures can change more quickly than your outcome measures. And the process measures are logically linked to achieve an intended outcome or an aim. Using the example of the patient fall prevention project, the process measures in this project are relating to best practice. And they are also the primary drivers in the driver diagram. So they are looking at the percentage of patients who have a risk screen on admission, the percentage of at-risk patients that had a comprehensive care plan completed, the percentage of at-risk patients who have all prevention interventions appropriately undertaken, and the percentage of patients who received intentional rounding. And on the right here, we have some charts that demonstrate some of those process measures. So the last family of measures is the balancing measure. The balancing measures look at the system or the process from a different direction or a different perspective. Balancing measures focus on what happened to the system or process as we made changes and improved the outcome and process measures. We need to look to see if there are any unanticipated consequences such as knock-on effects. And some examples of this might be decrease in staff satisfaction or increased costs or increased waiting times for patients. We need to see if there are any other factors influencing the outcome of our project, for example, the number or the volume of patients treated each week, you know, in other words, how busy has our team been? Also patient acuity, the severity of illness of our patients from week to week. So in summary, balancing measures are factors to watch out for on the side to see two things, to see if they are impacting on your project or if they are being impacted by your project. Generally, you may measure one or two balancing measures in your project. However, some projects may have no factors that require data to be collected and presented as a balancing measure. We will now look at some balancing measures in respect to our patient fall prevention project. So there may be some balancing measures from the factors impacting the project, such as patient admissions per week. In other words, how busy is the team because of the number of admissions that they're receiving each week? Or patient acuity, the severity of illness of the patients and therefore the demand on staff. So this is looking at the number of emissions per week, this chart. And then there may be some balancing measures that focus on the impact of the project, such as the impact of the project on staff satisfaction. 
We'll now look at a mental health quality improvement project to determine how they use the family of measures. And the project was about reducing the number of patients being placed into seclusion per month. So the outcome measures were the number of seclusions per month and they also measured the rate of seclusions per thousand acute bed days. And here's an example of a run chart. This is the one where they looked at the number of seclusions per month and the many PDSAs that they tried are stated in those annotation boxes. The process measures were around best practice and the examples here, they looked at the percentage of times operational huddle occurred, the percentage of new staff attending orientation within a month, the staff recruitment turnaround times in days, the percentage of sensory modulation that was offered to at-risk patients. Balancing measures, they looked at mental health staff claims rates and also the duration of seclusion in hours. And here's a run chart looking at that balancing measure of the duration of seclusion over time. In this next example of the family of measures, we're going to look at how a surgical team reduced their venous thromboembolism or VTE rate. So the project was around reducing incidence of orthopedic postoperative venous thromboembolism or VTE. The outcome measure, they looked at the percentage of postoperative orthopedic patients that had a VTE. The process measures are around best practice, and these are looking at the percentage of patients that were screened for VTE before they had the operation. Also, the percentage of at-risk patients that received their prophylaxis, in other words, their blood thinning medication, and the percentage of patients who wore compression stockings. And the balancing measure was to look at the, both the number and the percent of patients who had a post-operative bleed. And to the right, we've got some of the run charts looking at some of those measures. For this VTE project, we're now going to look more closely at the different measures, the outcome process and balancing measures. And this first chart here is a process measure, and it's looking at the percentage of elective surgery patients screened preoperatively for VTE risk. The desired direction of this chart is up. The median is around 82%. There are lots of PDSA cycles that were done in June, which has resulted in an upward trend. So they're happy with this result. This next chart for the VTE project is looking at another process measure. And it's the percentage of elective surgery patients that were at risk of VTE who received their prophylaxis, so in other words, their blood thinning medication. And again, they did some PDSA cycles in June, which has ended up with them having 100% compliance in October, November and December. And they're very happy with this outcome. This next chart is the outcome measure. It looks at the percentage of VTE incidents after elective surgery in orthopaedics. As we know, they did some PDSA cycles in June, and this has resulted in a downward trend. Before the team could celebrate, they also need to look at the balancing measure. This next run chart looks at the balancing measure for the VTE project. It looks at the count or the number of incidents of post-operative bleed, because post-op bleed can be a risk of the blood thinning medication. The desired direction of this chart is down, but unfortunately, at the end of the year, there is a trend upwards with the data, and this is an undesirable outcome. And the team will need to work out how they can balance the reduction of VTE incidents, but also keep their post-operative bleed rate down. You can create a dashboard of all your family measures by copy and pasting all the charts and putting them onto one page. It's now the family of measure quiz time and we'll do six multiple choice questions. Question number one, which of these categories is not a type of measure? Process, giant or balancing? Question number two, which of these measures impact on the patient and show the end result of your improvement work? Outcome, balancing and process. And question number three, which type of measure reflects the way your systems and processes work to deliver the outcome that you want? Balancing, process and outcome. So pause the video and reflect on these questions. So the answer to the first three questions in our quiz are as follows. Question number one, which of these categories is not a type of measure is a giant. Question number two, which of these measures impact the patient and show the end result of your improvement work? That's an outcome measure. 
And question number three, which type of measure reflects the way your systems and processes work to deliver the outcome you want? And that's a process measure. Question number four, if you were to measure the number of falls over a 12 month period, what kind of measure would this be? The options are a balancing measure, a process measure or an outcome measure. Question number five, in, which is from an infection prevention project. If you were to measure the percentage of staff who are compliant with hand hygiene, is this a balancing measure, an outcome measure or a process measure? And a staff compliance hand hygiene project. Now, if you were to measure the percentage of staff who are compliant with hand hygiene, in this particular project, is this a balancing measure, an outcome measure or a process measure? So pause the video and reflect on the questions and choose your answer. So the answers to these three questions. Question number four, if you were to measure the number of falls over a 12 month period, what kind of measure would this be? This is an outcome measure. Question number five, infection prevention project. So if you were to measure the percentage of staff who are compliant with hand hygiene, this would be a process measure. And with a staff compliance hand hygiene project, if you were to measure the percentage of staff who were compliant with hand hygiene in this particular project, this would be an outcome measure. For your information, these are the references that have been used to inform this presentation, particularly the three books highlighted in the images. This is the end of this section in the Run Chart Education session. Please go to the next part of the Run Chart series to learn more and to complete the quiz at the end.